During aging, there is an increase in inflammation, which together are known as inflammaging. The importance of inflammaging is that it induces expression of the enzyme IDO, otherwise known as indolamine 2,3-dioxygenase. IDO catalyzes the degradation of the amino acid tryptophan into kynurenine. And taking it a step further, the importance of the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio is that it increases during aging, and I covered that in an earlier video. If you missed it, it'll be in the right corner. And a relatively higher kynurenine to tryptophan ratio is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, which is what we'll see here with the hazard ratio for all-cause mortality on the y-axis or all-cause mortality risk plotted against the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio on the x. And in terms of what's significant, we put up a red line at a hazard ratio of 1. And there we can see that when the KTR was in the 15 to 23 range, that was associated with lowest all-cause mortality risk, whereas relatively higher values, greater than 25, were associated with a significantly increased all-cause mortality risk. But the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio isn't just associated with aging and all-cause mortality risk. It's also associated with reduced muscle mass. And that's what we'll see here in this study of 85-year-olds. On the left, we've got the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio, and then there are three groups uh, across the columns. On the left, we've got the lowest tertile or lowest third of D3CR. This is deuterium-labeled creatine. This is the method that they use to quantify muscle mass. And this method has been shown to associate uh, with MRI-determined muscle mass, so it's a good technique. So in the red box is the lowest third, people who are in the lowest third for having uh, muscle mass divided by body weight. And then we've got the middle third of people for muscle mass divided by body weight, and then the highest muscle mass divided by body weight. And then when looking at kynurenine to tryptophan values that were in each of these groups, we can see that the group that had the lowest muscle mass to body weight ratio had the highest kynurenine to tryptophan ratio of 0.45. And then the group that had an intermediate level of muscle mass to body weight ratio had a lower level of the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio. And the group that had the highest muscle mass had the lowest kynurenine to tryptophan ratio. So from this study, which will be in the video's description, we can see that a higher kynurenine to tryptophan ratio is associated with lower muscle mass. And conversely, a lower kynurenine to tryptophan ratio is associated with higher levels of muscle mass. Now, rather than just looking at this data in a published study, the good news is that this ratio can be tracked and potentially optimized. So with that in mind, what's my data? So to evaluate that, I've been sending blood using at-home metabolomics, using uh, Iolo's metabolomic kit. And besides kynurenine and tryptophan, it includes data for 600 meta other metabolites. And if you want to use it yourself, discount link in the video's description. So I currently have data for eight tests for the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio, as we'll see here, with the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio on the y-axis. And then over five tests in 2023, average KTR was 24 nan nanomolar per micromolar. And if you remember from the all-cause mortality data, lowest all-cause mortality risk was in the 15 to 23 range. So I'm just outside of that. But somewhat good news is that I'm not at a higher risk for all-cause mortality. Granted, it's just one test. If this was my data for 50 years, it would be, you know, I'd be worried, but, uh, or one group of tests, five tests. All-cause mortality risk was associated with a KTR of 25, greater than 25. So 24 isn't at the lowest risk, and it's not at the highest risk. It's somewhere in the middle. So I've got work to do to improve that. So that was 2023 data. Uh, 2023 data. What about in 2024? So I currently have three tests, and the average KTR over these three tests is now 23. So I'm at the high end of the range for lowest all-cause mortality risk, but I'd like to get it to go a little bit lower, to far away from the 25. So with that in mind, can the age-related kynurenine and tryptophan ratio increase be avoided? And at this point in the video, I usually post correlations with diet as a first-pass strategy to improve biomarkers. And that data is currently on Patreon. But before going and checking that out, I should mention that nothing was significantly uh, correlated with the KTR, including macros, micros, and foods following test number eight. Now, I sent the sample for analysis on Monday. So after those results come in in about three weeks, I'll recalculate correlations, post them on Patreon and the correlations tier. So check that out if you're interested. Before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in. 
including at-home metabolomics, epigenetic testing, NAD quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes ApoB and Grimage, green tea, diet tracking with Chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.